Okay, for today's setup, guys, we are checking out video enhancement settings for an awesome PCSX2 emulator for Windows PC. So, in this setup, guys, I'm going to be gradually showing you how to upscale your internal resolution and all the other settings which is going to make your PlayStation 2 games using PCSX2 Nightly Edition look as great as the gameplay you can see right now. So, if you're interested in modernizing your PlayStation 2 collection using PCSX2, seriously check this one out. Okay, now before I start today's PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator enhancement setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content like this video you're watching today. Gets you notified every time I release a video, which is daily, sometimes three times a day, and it also helps my channel a great deal. So the footage you've just seen is indeed outrun 2 on ps2 and this was running with pcsx2 emulator with default settings so by default pcsx2 is going to run at the lowest possible settings but of course we can actually enhance this so what we're going to do is just open up pcsx2 and let me just make you aware i'm using the latest nightly version of this so first of all, to let you know, if you're not aware of it, in PCSX2, we can actually configure video settings and enhancements as a whole, or we can actually do it per game. So in this setup guide, I'm going to be doing it per game. So I've obviously got Outrun 2, or Outrun 2006, whatever you like to call it. If I right-click on the icon of the game, if I then go to Properties by left-clicking, now if we just scroll down, we're going to find Graphics. Now the first thing you need to be aware of is that under render, if you find that a game doesn't boot or it's giving you a black screen, then it's normally down to the render. So for example, right now this is on use global setting. So what this is doing is actually running my game fine. So I'm going to leave this to use global setting for now. Now under adapter, I'm going to just make sure that my RTX 3050 GPU is actually selected so we can give the game more beef and of course, a graphics card is there to beef up your gaming experience. So what we're going to do next is take a look at aspect ratio. If I left click on this and drop this down. Now as you're aware, most of you are aware, I've covered the last couple of days Nintendo GameCube using Dolphin Emulator as well as PS1 enhancement video which is using Duck Station Emulator. Now PS2 is in the same era so most games, probably 99% of PlayStation 2 games were designed for 4x3 ratio, which is obviously the boxed ratio where you've got the black bars on the side. We can actually put this onto widescreen. And let me just remind you, by putting this to widescreen, some games might look good, some might look bad. What this is going to do is stretch from 4x3 to 16x9. So let's say some games could potentially look too stretched and it's going to look bad. I'm going to try this on widescreen 6.9. Now the next option down is FMV aspect ratio, so this is full motion video. If we drop this down, what we can do with this is also display full motion video, which is pretty much your cutscenes in games. Uh, we can actually do this too at widescreen 16x9. Again, by putting this to widescreen 16x9, it's potentially going to make things look too stretched. So really, aspect ratio and FMV or full motion video is entirely up to you, whatever works for you. So next up we got the interlacing, so from time to time you might notice that your PlayStation 2 games are wobbling using PCSX2 emulator. So if we drop down the interlacing, normally by going to something like automatic should fix that problem. If you do still keep getting that wobble, then just select one of these and at least one of these options here should do it for you. Next up, we got bilinear filtering. So what this does, if we drop this down, it actually smooths out our games. Or the next one down, as it says, bilinear sharp, this is gonna sharpen your games. So if you wanna take away pixelation and give the edges on your games a little bit of bounce, a little bit of smooth effect, then bilinear smooth is the option to choose for this one. 
Now, just here, we've got an option. This is anti-blur. So PlayStation 2 was known for, say, for example, playing a racing game. You've got the lights behind you, and it creates almost a blur effect. And sometimes it's a little bit too much, but at the time when PlayStation 2 came out, it was one of its selling points to make things look a bit more realistic. If you don't like that, you can actually get rid of that by checking anti-blur. We've also got V-Sync. Now, V-Sync, like I always say, is absolutely crucial to reduce screen tear, especially in 3D games such as this one. Uh, so PlayStation 2 era was pretty much the ultimate time for 3D games, almost more realism than the PS1 offered. So by putting V-Sync on, this is going to take away screen tear. So with these settings applied for now, what I'm going to do is just go to close and we're going to test this game out with those settings. Ready? So as we can see there through that gameplay, 16 by 9 is applied and other things are applied, but we can actually make this a hell of a lot better. So again, what I'm going to do is right click on the game itself, go to properties, and if we just drop down to graphics again, now of course display section is now done. What we're going to do next is go to rendering, and this just here, internal resolution, is where you can really, really bring your PlayStation 2 games to life. If we drop this down, we got the option here to upscale PlayStation 2 games to 8K. Now, if you're running a computer which isn't too capable of emulation, then personally, I would stick with use global setting or just keep on native PS2. If you're running a higher end computer, maybe a gaming laptop or a gaming computer, if you've got the hardware capable of doing this, then go up to around 1080p, even 2K. And just let me tell you that some games for PlayStation 2 use in PCSX2 will lag. And by increasing internal resolution, some games might not boot at all. So it's one of those things that you might have to experiment with. But if we even boost this to 720p, 1080p, then it's still a massive, massive increase from native resolution. So I'm going to put this to 1080p. Now, what I find the trick is, is start with internal resolution, and once you pick the internal resolution that you think might work, just boot the game back up as a starting point, because anything after internal resolution is going to be very wearing on your hardware. So let's just get that sweet point to begin with. If I open up the game again, And as you can see from that footage, absolutely massive improvement. Everything looks fresher, textures look a bit more defined, and everything in general looks defined. It just looks like a completely new game altogether. Now, let me just remind you, again, that if you do run this through a lower-end computer, it's likely you're not going to achieve 1080p like I've just done. So what we're going to do again is, of course, add more improvements. And this is what I suggest doing. Something like PCSX2 can be very wearing, like I say. So I find it very important to do this in increments rather than putting everything on together. And then at this point, we can then determine what's causing our games to lag. So if I go back to rendering again, 
We've set internal resolution up and technically I could probably go over 1080p, but I also want to add extra things to this to make 1080p look better. Okay, next up we've got anastrophic filtering and what this is going to do is actually take away jagged edges. So in some games, if we're looking at the car in this game, for example, you might notice there's jagness around the car. Uh, so obviously this is down to computer hardware limitations when the PlayStation 2 was released. And that's why you don't particularly see this nowadays in modern games. We can actually clean this up by using anastrophic filtering. Now, just like internal resolution, the further up you go with this, the more wearing it's going to be on your computer. So without a doubt, internal resolution and anastrophic filtering are the two main ones which are really gonna take it out of your hardware. Now, like I say with internal resolution, even if you get this to two times or even four times, it's still a massive, massive improvement. If I just put this to four times for now, and like I say, the key of this is increments. So what I've done here is obviously set anastrophic filtering up, which again, just like internal resolution, is potentially going to cause your computer to lag. So let's just test out the game again. Race for the top position. So as we can see, absolutely perfection and OutRun 2006 or as I call OutRun 2 is almost looking like a new modern game or not far from it. So we can still do enhancements to this, so properties again and graphics. Now the next option I'm going to suggest is just going over to post-processing and under sharpening and anti-aliasing and I'm going to choose to put this one on sharpen only and as it says this is to be used with internal resolution. So obviously I put internal resolution to 1080p. So post-processing and sharpening and anti-aliasing is designed for this. I'm also gonna pop on FXAA. And one last time, I'm just gonna go down to close and open it up again. Race for the top position. So that's it for today's PCSX2 PlayStation 2 emulator video enhancement setup guide. So as we can see throughout the video, massive, massive significant improvements from default settings up until 1080p was applied. So let me just remind you again, if you do have a lower end computer, it could fry. So two of the most crucial parts with PCSX2 emulation in terms of enhancement is your internal resolution and anti aliasing is those two options which are going to make your games look better but they're also going to be very draining on your hardware so like i say if you've got a computer which isn't too great then just leave it to default settings and eventually buy another computer or at least upgrade your gpu so anyways if you liked today's video hit notification subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content so you're notified every time i release a video and if you're interested do check out yesterday's 
PlayStation 1 Duck Station Video Enhancements Guide, as well as the Dolphin Emulator GameCube Video Enhancements Guide. Anyway, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.